told your brother this, and then when he came back home, he went right back to her. Yes, ma'am. That's why you're standing on this side of the aisle today, because you feel like, ultimately, it's about Dawson. Why do you call other men dads all the time? Your mother's I was, married was, right now, because and I you're call, calling him dad. I called dad. him dad because he raised me from the time oh, I was 13. Because when you downgrade him, you downgrade yourself, because you the one laying on your back with your legs open for him every time he calls. Just like he said earlier, what'd he say about the sex the first time? It happened like this? Mr. Vadabonkur is a man on a mission. He's here to prove that he's not the father of Ms. Fernari's one-year-old son, Dawson. He's adamant that their relationship was nothing more than a fling, while Ms. Fernari claims they were together for over two years. Mr. Vadabonkur, you have petitioned the court to prove to Ms. Fernari that you are not the biological father of her one-year-old son, Dawson. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you can prove you're not the father, and when today's results, when your case, you want her out of your life for good. Yes, Your Honor. According to Mr. Vadaboncourt, he met Ms. Fernari on Facebook through his sister. They had unprotected sex a couple of times, and then he went away for months. When he found out Ms. Fernari was pregnant, he started hearing rumors about her infidelity. I met her over Facebook through my sister, and after that, I, I, I had unprotected sex with her, and I ended up going away probably three to four days later. Now, six months down the road, I get a letter from my sister stating that Ms. Fenari's pregnant. I haven't talked to her. I tried calling her from where I was, and there's no answer. And then I get pictures in the mail saying, hey, this is your kid. Yikes. Ms. Fernari, on the other hand, insists that Mr. Vadabonkur is the father of her child. She admits to sleeping with two other men, but is certain that Dawson is his son. The tension in the courtroom is palpable as both parties stand their ground and exchange verbal blows. I was thinking he is mine. Now, I get to talking to another guy, and he tells me he's had sex with her, and I look at Dawson, and I look at him, and I'm thinking it's his kid. How did that affect you? I was sick of it. I didn't want to keep going through it because it's putting strain on me and my fiance's relationship. So as the case unfolds, we hear from Mr. Vadabonkur's sister, Janine, who spills the tea on Ms. Fernari's cheating ways. She witnessed her sleeping with another man at a party, which only adds fuel to the fire. You're the sister that told him about the cheating? Yes. But you're standing with Ms. Fernari today? It's about this little boy right here. Tell that's, me what you that's know. That's what it's about. Tell me what you know. One night after we had all been drinking, um, she slept with one of the people that came to our little get together. It's a classic case of he said, she said, and the truth seems to be buried under layers of lies and deceit. Mr. Vadaboncourt is determined to prove that he's not the father, while Ms. Fernari is holding on to hope that Dawson is his son. Now, why would they That's constantly be lying to me about it? That's the question that I have. Your point all this. is, what, what is, what is the motive? Do they want to be with her? Do they want to keep you two apart? You're thinking, why are these people coming to tell me something they have no reason to tell me? I honestly don't know, Your Honor. I think they just want me to know who I was dealing with. As the judge listens to both sides of the story, it's clear that there's more to this case than meets the eye. With rumors of infidelity, conflicting timelines, and a child's future hanging in the balance, the stakes couldn't be higher. It's a nail-biting moment for everyone involved, and now we're about to find out the truth. Mr. Vadbonker, you are the father. That's fine. your son, David. That's fine. Now all this can stop and you can be his dad. Can I give my brother a hug? Through all this, I love Absolutely. my brother. Absolutely. You don't want to hug your sister? No, I don't. He doesn't want to hug Miss Vabon. At the end of the day, if he needs me, that's my baby brother, and I'm there. No matter what he may say, that's my brother. Mr. Levette is convinced that his girlfriend, Ms. Jackson, has been playing him like a fiddle. And sure, it sucks, but he may be right. Sounds like we're in for a wild ride. Mr. Lovett, you say Ms. Jackson is a manipulative cheater who has flaunted her flings in front of you during your relationship, and you say her affairs have caused you to doubt that you fathered her 15-month-old son, Corey Jr. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jackson, on the other hand, is standing her ground. But Mr. Lovett isn't buying it, because apparently Corey Jr. doesn't look like his other kids. His other kids that he's fathered with different women, folks, different women. But the stuff that she be doing, it brings the doubts on it. Okay. Like, it ain't like you You've been good. You're right. Of course, you've been pregnant. And you ain't either. He didn't take the relationship seriously. He was talking to other women. So being that he didn't take it seriously, I didn't take it seriously. He was talking to other women, and I were talking to other guys. Now, let's talk about Corey Jr., the adorable 15-month-old baby caught in the middle of this drama. Mr. Levette claims he loves the little guy, but those doubts keep creeping in. Loyal. Days go by, another tracking oh. device on my phone. He's been proven to be not loyal. And buying him, me loving him so much, and him loving me so much, 
marriage and us wanting to be together, I had to be certain that I wasn't being played. You got detective skills. Mm. I don't You're play. looking for another profession. I don't play. But hold up, things take a spicy turn when Mr. Levette starts spilling the tea about Ms. Jackson's alleged affairs and questionable behavior. According to Mr. Levette, Ms. Jackson has been putting tracking devices on his phone and logging into his Facebook, pretending to be him. Whoa, did someone just order a bunch of red flags? I did have to worry about bills, because soon as you seen the other guy there, you turned the lights off on me and my kids. Your Honor. But the guy never came inside my house. The guy pulled up, cut my grass. After that, we sat on the back of the truck. Nobody had a should be drink. over that there. That's what he came up and pulled up on. Nobody should be over there. Then that same guy end up sending naked pictures to my phone. Ms. Jackson wasn't backing down, and she quickly defended her actions. Detective skills on point, Ms. Jackson. But Mr. Levette was still pissed. He's accusing her of cheating in defense of his own wandering eye. So you feel like. You all broke up and you all were at odds. She started going out with somebody else. Next thing you know, she's pregnant, but then trying to get back with you because yep. you feel like she wanted you to take care of this baby and all of her other children. That too, and also she's still married. So I wasn't taking and my divorce serious was in the beginning. Upon, until I got so pregnant. I'm still not so now we got serious. kids in between the marriage. And here's the kicker. Mr. Levette claims he caught Ms. Jackson with her ex at her house, but Ms. Jackson was like, nah, that was just my cousin. Oh, the tangled web of lies we weave. And then there's this whole grass cutting incident that's got everyone talking. Her husband is here. We're gonna meet him in a moment. Now you can talk about it if you want, but you started a relationship with her too. Right. Exactly. And got her pregnant. Right. And I've been taking care of my responsibility. But I no, what I'm this. saying is you were in He always tried to down talk me, but you knew me before. You knew how I was. You knew my facts that I was married before we even got sexually intimate. I mean, can you imagine sitting on the back of a truck with your ex while he's cutting the grass? That's some next level awkwardness right there. And then, to top it all off, the ex sends naked pictures to Mr. Levette's phone. Yikes, sucks to be in Mr. Levette position. I wanna move this forward. I wanna get the answers that we need so we can figure out how in the world do we get ourselves out of this. Jerome, can you please escort Mr. Coleman into the courtroom? Sure. Ms. Jackson, I'd like to hear from your husband. But wait, there's more. Mr. Levette drops another bombshell. Ms. Jackson's got six kids. Whoa, talk about a full house. So to sum it all up, we've got cheating accusations, tracking devices, exes popping up, and a whole lot of kids. Oh, and don't forget the DNA test. Speaking of DNA. Mr. Lovett, you are not his father. I told this. That's why I wanted to get DNA. Are you sure? How is that possible? Do you know who his father is? You know who it is. Oh. oh my God. Do you need to sit down, Ms. Jackson? <laughs> Mr. Poravecchio claims that the defendants, Ms. Touche and her daughter, Ms. Lutz, fraudulently received $150,000 in settlement money from the death of his father, Ricky Poravecchio Sr. It's paternity meets inheritance, and these cases get heated, folks. Mr. Poravecchio, you claim that the defendants, Ms. Touche and her daughter, Ms. Lutz, fraudulently received $150,000 in settlement money from the death of your father, Ricky Poravecchio Sr. Because Ms. Lutz is not not your biological sister, and her mother covered up that fact. Yes, Your Honor. So Mr. Poravecchio believes that Ms. Lutz is not his biological sister, and her mother covered up that fact to get a piece of that inheritance money. Now that's a bold claim to make. Better hope you're right, because if you aren't, you're in for some awkward Thanksgiving dinners. Ms. Touche, you are here to put an end to a more than 30-year-old feud between your family and the Poravecchios, which started with rumors and lies about your daughter's paternity. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Poravecchio, how have you and your family been defrauded by the defendants. My father was on a tugboat. Miss Touche, on the other hand, is here to put an end to a 30-year-old feud between the families. She's not having any of Mr. Poravecchio's accusations and is ready to set the record straight. At least that's what she says. Declared deceased, Miss Lutz was named changed from Theo to My mom had to change my name because I was born a Theo because she was out of wedlock. My dad and her were poor. They didn't have the money oh, to be true. married. They were I poor. Disagree. And after he died, they were already gonna get my name changed. And after they died, he I died. 
died, she had to have it changed. Now, Mr. Porovecchio brings up the fact that after his father's passing, Ms. Lutz's name was changed from Thiel to Porovecchio. He believes this was all part of a scheme to secure that settlement money. So We're totally locked. different time. This and was in 1982. It's not the 1700s, Ricky. Lori. It was in 83. You do not know what the laws and you regulations were, were at that time. Apparently, you don't either. Excuse it, me? I was there. Matter. You were not. Okay. So my mom and my dad were separated, right, when he died. And <clears> just <throat> living apart, there was no right. legality they to it at divorced, all. They were not divorced, and my dad never said I was not a daughter. Wait, Mr. Porvecchio, you brought... But hold on. Miss Touche has something to say about that. She explains that the name change was a legal process that had to be done, and it was all in accordance with the law. Things are getting heated. There's They've things always had a family that were feud. said in the family on my side, my okay. father's side, and also on your side. Why Why couldn't, what did we say? Quicker? I never said anything bad to you never. about the Provecchios because you were a child and there was no place in that for children. We that was an adult situation. She kept us in contact after my daddy died. She didn't have to go so get you from my Lutz, home and spend, let us spend Ms. with Lutz, you together. direct your comments to the court. I want to understand this. Mr. Porovecchio brings in a witness, Miss Cortez, who is actually his aunt. She sheds some light on the family dynamics and adds another layer to this already complicated situation. Miss Cortez recalls a moment where Miss Touche allegedly ignored Miss Mr. Porovecchio's family at a restaurant, causing quite the stir. And, uh, as far as them separating, my brother and Laura, is that my brother walked in on her having an affair. Oh my God. You How would you know something like that? Your Honor, I'd like it to explain told, that lie. It was told okay? by my brother. I was That's... 21 years old. Ms. Lutz jumps in, defending her mother and expressing her disbelief at the accusations being thrown around. She's not backing down without a fight. The family feud is reaching new heights as emotions run high. That your father walked in on Miss Touche and another man. Right. Correct, Your Honor. Your Honor, that's a lie. That's not the reason my husband husband and I separated in the, initially. I got a job right as, as I finished school. I went to work. I was driving a really old, broken down car. My husband was home watching the children. I was driving the car. It's now clear that there's more to this story than meets the eye. Secrets, lies, and family drama are all coming to the surface in this courtroom showdown. With tensions running high and emotions flaring, it's time to find out how this case will unfold. Mr. Porvecchio and Ms. Lutz are siblings. Thank I you. Told keep up you. the lies, Ricky. Keep you. them up. You ruined our relationship with their lies. You're done, Ricky. Congratulations. You thank you very much, Dawn. You the one Dawn. that wanted this. No, I wanted you it to show it you. Out. I you wanted to show you we and never had this problem exactly until they got in the middle of us. Please Let's get some order. Listen, listen, I just listen. wanted to know that Ms. Phillips here is trying to prove to Mr. Polk that he's the father of her one-month-old daughter, Promise. She's all about wanting her baby to have a real father, not just a daddy. And Mr. Polk? Well, he's been playing the denial game since the birth of the baby. Ms. Phillips, you've opened your case today to prove to Mr. Polk that he is the father of your one-month-old daughter, Promise. You say after Mr. Polk's initial acceptance of the pregnancy, he has been MIA since your daughter's birth. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. The story begins with a classic social media meetup. Ms. Phillips saw Mr. Polk on a friend's post and decided to slide into his DMs. Apparently, she was out for a little revenge. And boy, did she get more than she bargained for. Mr. Polk started liking her pics, and the rest is history. But hold on, there's a twist. He has been MIA since your daughter's birth. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Polk, you say Ms. Phillips is pinning her baby on you in hopes of having a relationship with you. Yes, ma'am. But you claim there was never a relationship and you're not the father, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Turns out Mr. Polk was already in a relationship when things heated up between him and Ms. Phillips. She claims he was all about wanting her to have his baby, sending her sweet messages about starting a family. And get this, she even got his name tattooed on her. Talk about commitment. But when it was his turn to get inked, he vanished into thin air. I was playing my role. But were you using protection? Yes, at the time, yes. Oh, he lying, you're on the hip, when, when we first, you? When we first start messing around, I would use protection. You don't believe him, dude. I know you don't believe him, because let me tell you the story. He, he don't like condoms. He don't like protection. <laughs> he don't use protection at all. So I, 
So yeah. you say you weren't using protect. We not, no. Now let's hear Mr. Polk's side of the story. He's all about denying the baby, saying Miss Phillips is just trying to trap him into a relationship. He claims they were using protection, but Miss Phillips is quick to call him out on that. She says he's not a fan of condoms and was all about going raw. Oh boy, this is getting messy. So, so you start having sex and tell me what it means when you say you caught feelings. See, I had she left- fell in love. I had caught, no, he fell in love with me. She he fell in love with me. I the, had left my, my, I left my little man and everything. I left my little boyfriend alone, left him. Everything, cause BJ was telling me, oh, if you went with him, we'll be this, I want you to have my baby, I want to be a family with you, all that good stuff. Fell so, for that okie doke. Yes, yeah, so I left my, yeah, I left my man. As the court proceedings unfold, it's clear that Ms. Phillips caught some serious feelings for Mr. Polk. She even left her boyfriend for him, believing they were meant to be. But when she found out she was pregnant, things took a turn. She got his name tattooed on her, thinking they were going to be a family. But Mr. Polk had other ideas. <laughs> Why you got a whole girlfriend? Tell him again, yeah. your earner. <laughs> Tell him again, your earner. And then you're not even taking her calls. Yeah. Now, I, I, would, I, 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 mean, with I feel because like, Miss Phillips, there are some other people you could have probably called. He was not done with me. He, done me. With it at the he wasn't done with me. I wasn't having that. He wasn't done with me. I was me. done with it at the he same time. Me. The tension between Miss Phillips and Mr. Polk is thick as they go back and forth about their past relationship. She's adamant about wanting him to step up and be a father to her child while he's sticking to his trusty denial game. What Damn we're play. realizing is that he's not addicted to you, oh. but he enjoys having sex with you. Yes. And that's why we're mm -hmm. here, and that's why you're upset. Yep. Let's really say what it is. Yep. Um, Mr. Polk. And he's Polk. trying to claim he cut me off, but he was catching Ubers. I went to my hotel last night to four o'clock this morning, was getting on my nerves last night. As the judge digs deeper into their history, it becomes clear that there's more to this story than meets the eye. Miss Phillips is holding on to hope that Mr. Polk will step up and be a dad, but he's not budging. The tension between them is thick, and it's time for the big reveal. Mr. Polk, you are the father. Yeah. That's your beautiful little girl. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry about the doubt. Well, now that he knows that she is, he needs to help me. A absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And more than that. Ms. Fields starts off by sharing how she reached out to Mr. Sandifer on Facebook for some money, and he hits her back with a bombshell saying he might need to find his real dad because he's not her father. Ouch, that's gotta hurt, right? Ms. Boyer and Ms. Fields, you've both brought the defendant, Mr. Sandifer, to court today to prove that he is your biological father, but you each believe that you are his only daughter and the other is not, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Sandifer, you state you do not believe that either is your daughter, but actually hope that one is and one is not. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Fields is not having it, though. She fires back, saying Mr. Sandifer never did anything for her and that her grandparents actually raised her because her mom couldn't afford to take care of her. Shots fired. But Mr. Sandifer insists he did his best as a father, even if he wasn't around all the time. Ms. Boyer, you may have a seat. So, Ms. Fields, start from the beginning. About two years ago, I sent him a message on Facebook asking him if I could borrow some money, and he responded with, maybe I need to find my real dad, that he wasn't even my father. That's not true. I was upset, Your Honor, at that point in time, because she just kept on aggravating me about money, money, and that's, that's the only time I've ever heard from her is when it was money. And then we have Ms. Boyer jumping in, claiming that Mr. Sandifer introduced her as his daughter, so he better step up and take care of her. She's not holding back, folks. But Mr. Sandifer is not convinced, saying he has doubts because his name isn't on her birth certificate. The plot thickens. You are my father. You are my father. I don't compare to you because you were never around me. I have doubts. Okay. Young lady. All right, tell me about your childhood, Miss Fields. Growing up, I was, um, him and my mother were like, were married from the time I was four to about the time I was nine. This hurts you. It's okay. I was adopted take to my grandparents time. because my mother couldn't afford, she couldn't afford to take care of three children by herself. My grandparents. Miss Fields then opens up about her childhood, revealing that her grandparents adopted her and did everything they could to take care of her. She even mentions how her grandfather asked Mr. Sandifer to look after her and her mom before he passed away. Continue on, please. I'm listening. My grandparents, they adopted me. They did everything they could for me. They took care of me. They, they did more than what they were supposed to do. Yeah, and they pushed me out of the picture. That's because why Because you were never to... in the picture. How could they pu push you out of the picture when you were never there to begin Samantha. with? Then why do you call other men dads all the time? Your mother's was, married with... right now, because and I you're call calling him, him I called dad. him dad because he raised me from the time Full I was hockey, 13. Girl, but Mr. Sandifer isn't buying it. He questions why Ms. Fields called other men dad, and why she only came to him for money 
money if he's supposed to be her father. The accusations are flying left and right. Hey, so Mr. Sandiford, did you date her mother? Did you have an intimate relationship they with were her mother? Married. Yes, Your Honor. Then she come up pregnant, and I was always told by friends that Samantha was my child, but you when the baby was too. born, I was there. As the case unfolds, we learn more about the complicated relationships between Mr. Sandifer, Ms. Fields, and Ms. Boyer. Ms. Fields shares how her mother found another man, and Mr. Sandifer wasn't in the picture, while Ms. Boyer defends her claim as Mr. Sandifer's daughter. It's a real family feud, folks. You do. Of course, because I fought custody for her and everything. And you would have never done that if it wasn't for Samantha. How school. could I when you was adopted out you from under me, Samantha? You weren't there before. Before I was adopted out from under you, when I was nine years old, you could have done something. What did you want me to do? Do act like a father? I, I was do what there you had for to do you. To get there was no of other man child? in your life what, to be your father. Do what you had to do to get I took the responsibility okay, you didn't of man take up. Responsibility of man up when? When you were at the bar drinking? The emotions are running high as Miss Fields recounts the struggles she faced growing up and how her grandparents stepped in to raise her when her mom couldn't. But Mr. Sandifer continues to question the paternity of both women, citing the lack of his name on their birth certificates as a reason for his doubts. Yes, Explain Tom. to the court why you're here today exactly. I am here today to prove that Mr. Sandifer is my father. Um, I have proof otherwise, Your Honor. You have proof that she is not your daughter? My name's not on the birth certificate. I'd like to see that. Jerome, please hand me that evidence. But Your Honor, he was in a relationship with my mother when I was born, and he lived with us till I was five years old. This is a copy of Ms. Boyer's birth certificate. As the courtroom drama reaches its peak, tensions flare between Ms. Fields, Ms. Boyer, and Mr. Sandifer. Accusations fly, emotions run high, and the truth seems more elusive than ever. Will the DNA test finally reveal the answer to this family mystery? Let's find out. Mr. Sandifer, you are not her father. Oh, wow. You okay, sir? You need to take a seat? Yeah. Mr. Sandifer, you are not her father. Oh my 